Welcome to the Morally End. My name's Mark Machado, and I'm joined by my cousin across the pond, the professor of cricketology, Dominic Machado. Uh, we are going to have a quick preview of Sri Lanka's series against the West Indies. That starts in a couple of days' time. We're also going to um, go deep into Sanath Jaisuri being appointed the, um, the head coach. I'm going to say full-time. Technically, it's till the end of March 2026, but that's about as full time as jobs get with, it, with SLC, right? Um, before we do that, though, just a few things to remind you about. Please, 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 if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that follow button. We need your numbers. We want to grow this channel, make as much content as we possibly can around the Shrunker team. There's also an India show that we kind of produced but we're, we're, we're not on it we're not involved in it called Crimble Corner we've got loads of great content ideas for other shows down the line as well which are which will be kind of in in the cricket universe but not necessarily Sri Lanka based so please um, subscribe tell everyone you know about the Murali end we we will bud uh, Mendes when he reminds me I'll, I'll I'll get the uh, audio versions out on the on the podcast apps as well. So if you're listening to the podcast, hit follow, subscribe, tell your friends about us, follow our Substack page as well. Um, some great stuff coming out of Estelle from the UAE at the Women's World Cup, and also from Nick Brooks this week about Kamindi Mendes. And Dom's got some great things in the pipeline as well. Um, I will spare you my writing; it's it's pretty <laughs> horrific. Um, so you you won't need to read that for for. Uh, the foreseeable future, at least. Um, and also, you join our WhatsApp channel as well. We've got a WhatsApp channel. Uh, we can't see your number, you can't see our number, but we put stuff in there uh, kind of all, kind of, I want to say all day. Whenever there's something going on with Shrunken Cricket, yep. we, we, we put it in there and um, it's, a, it's a great way to stay on top of all the Shrunken Cricket news. Um, and you can, we, you can communicate with us via the medium of emojis. Anyway... Before we get into it, one final one final announcement. If you need a mortgage in the UK, in the UAE, or in Saudi Arabia, Mike Ward Mortgages. Uh, Mike Ward might be your man. All details in the description of this uh, podcast or video, uh, wherever you're watching or listening. Um, Dom, Sanajar Siri has been appointed full-time head coach. Um, he's got the job kind of off the back of the World Cup where... He did travel with the team as a kind of, I don't know, ex-pro consultant, um, legendary player consultant. Um, yeah. He's given the job. He kind of imme- almost immediately won that series, an ODI series against India, which we hadn't done since the old king died. Um, and then <laughs> he, <coughs> I should say the old queen died, I suppose. And then he had a tour of England that we thought was going to be three, a, a kind of a, a, a test series that we thought might end up being a, a whitewash, but ended up with Schlunker actually putting quite a good, a really good performance in against England at the Oval and winning. And then he won a New Zealand series at home, the test series 2-0. The, um, he's been given this contract that will take him up to the end of the next T20 World Cup, which is in Sri Lanka and India, and will also encompass the end of the um the, that that championship that will conclude in the Lon- that could conclude in the london game that Sri Lanka are kind of in the running of get into um and also he, he, during his tenure the next cycle of that tournament will start as well we'll kind of be halfway through it if he was to leave um and at the end of his contract and see it all the way through of course everything could go really successfully and we could keep him on forever <laughs> what I what I do what we what do we know about this appointment so far? We know the players seem to like him and seem to want to play for him. They they're quite forthcoming. We list them in and around press conferences about them talking about that. Um, it's for the first time in quite a while. It's not a foreign coach, which I think is a, like personally, I don't think having a foreigner necessarily was something that was particularly working that well for us also and I think at some point we do we're going to get some sort of article in the newsletter about how actually basically every team on the planet apart from England is it England and Pakistan um, don't have yeah 
don't have maybe South Africa as well. Maybe South Africa as well. Yeah, don't have a shrunken involved somewhere in their setup, um, even if it might be in youth development. Um, so maybe we were the ones missing out by not looking in our in our own pool. And uh, we also know that he really, really wants this job. And actually, I think he's worked quite hard to get himself in a position where he's been given it. What's your kind of take on the whole situation? Yeah, you know, I think a lot of people have seen this as an out and out positive. They've seen the positive results. Um, they've seen a win in England. They've seen a uh, total domination of a New Zealand team on a test tour here. Um, they've also seen a win against India in a ODI series, which was a long time coming. But I think uh, for me, it, it, I don't feel, and, and people will will take this negatively. They'll definitely take it as if I'm a Sonneth hater. But I think one of the questions was after the last World Cup, there was there were a ton of questions around this team. We needed to take a step back, look at it, consider it, consider its long-term future and say, okay, well, what's best for this team going forward, right? We were told that they were going to interview candidates and potentially hire them. But it seems like after Sanath got the job and had a little bit of success, that all went out the window, right? And this is less about appointing Sanath than SLC doing its due diligence in terms of Who's out there? What can they provide for the squad? Um, and even interviewing Sanath, right? Because I think when we're talking about head coach of um, SLC, we want someone who's not only going to prioritize winning in the short term, right? We want someone who's thinking about the long-term health of SLC, who's thinking about how it operates, how they're going to... Um, do team selection, how they're going to uh, bring up young players, all that stuff. And I want to know, did Sri Lanka really add the, 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 is that, the is that, is that, is that his job though? Because he's coming in basically to look after the senior men's side, right? Um, he's mm -hmm. not, a, he's not a director of cricket. He's not the person who's meant to have that whole vision. But I suppose what, what you, what the real, what you're really asking is, is, what is his scope? Like, where where does yeah. where does it begin and where does it end? Right? Yeah, I think I think that's basically what I'm interested in is because we had Chris Silverwood and Mahela, right? So we had kind of the on field coach, and then we had the sort of director of cricketing operations. Mahela and Silverwood got fired, and we kind of got Sunath sort of, kind of as a replacement for Mahela, and now he's in the head coaching role. So what I want to see is like what is going into his coaching, right? Um, I know the vibes are good right now, but what's the long-term plan for this team? What's the long-term role? Uh, what long-term role does Sunath have, right? So, and the reason why I think some of those questions are relevant is because basically we're saying we're keeping Sunath through the next T20 World Cup. And how do we grow the squad that we have that underperformed in 2024 while, and let's just be clear here, Sanath was on the ground in the USA for that World Cup, right? And was very much with the team into a potential championship contender for 2026, right? And then this, this conversation we can kind of continue when we get to the squad, right? Um, and then what about his support staff? I haven't heard any changes about who is being brought in who are his data analysts, who he's using, um, how he's interacting with the other squads. Is the structure the same? And Sanath just been sort of plopped into this head coaching role? Um, and if so, who's running the structure, right? Because we know Mahela isn't doing that anymore. Or is it something bigger, right? And we all know that there's some tension between Sanath and Mahela, right? And historical tension. So my question is, to what extent... Is this something of a full takeover by Sanath? We want to. I want to know really at the end of the day who's pulling what strings. What are the long term plans for this side? And okay, again, these are all the negative things. I do think he's gotten the players to play well. I do think there are benefits of having a local coach um, in terms of communicating with the players, in terms of um, sharing expectations, sharing unique experiences, 
all that kind of stuff. And there have been some good things said by uh, Sanath. He was talking about the importance of using data to evaluate the team. Now, whether he's actually doing that or he's saying that is another question. Again, we'll reopen that when we get to a, the question of the squad composition. But I really want to know is what is the wholesale plan here? Where, if SLC is making Sanath the head coach, where does he fit within the wholesale the the whole scale plan? And I ask this because I really do think our cricket has come pretty far over the last three or four years. I think we've created a pool of talent, um, especially in the white ball arena and also in the red ball arena. We don't just have, you know, five or six players who certainly who will certainly make the test team and then nothing really behind them. We just kind of uh, plug up the gaps with whoever is there. We've got a long list of players. We have a healthy system and we talked about this last time. And when you bring in a big coach like Sanath Jayasuriya, who has been poking around the outsides of SLC for a while, I have to wonder what's going to happen to that structure. And how can we ensure that the things that are being done for the long-term health of Sri Lanka cricket, right? And that's what I want as a fan, is I want that to, to happen. Like, I don't really care about, okay, well, we won a bilateral series. Great. But where are the World Cup wins? Where are the World Cup knockout round appearances? How are we going to get there? Um, how do we understand T20 cricket? And what help is Sanas Jayasuriya, who's never coached before in his life, is he getting to support him in those endeavors? So, so, so I think what you know, there's there's a lot there's a lot to talk about there. So let, let's talk about what I. Th- I s- I see his role being, right? Firstly, Upal Tharunga is our chief selector. We know he's also really good friends with Sana as well. So it's it's kind of unclear there on who's actually doing, who's the, who's got the, it's not unclear at all. I mean, regardless of what you think of the titles, I think Sana's got the final say. He's going to get the squad he wants. Yep. I don't think necessarily that's a bad thing because I think once you have a coach, you need to give them what they want what they think they want in order to succeed. Um, I So some some teams around the world have issues with kind of pipeline of players, right? Like you see so many English players come into a side and they go go abroad and they look like they've never played cricket before. That kind of desert, like pipeline of players and developing talent is kind of outside his remit, but also is kind of also not slightly not a problem in Sri Lanka because actually we've got such a strong school system that we're always going to cre- at least create players who kind of should at least be given the shot at international cricket, right? And we'll talk about a couple of who are, who are coming into the side at the moment. Did you, lo- did you lose me there? No, no, I heard you. Okay. Um, so I, had to, I had to plug uh, plug it in 30 minutes. Remind me to tell us though. Yeah. Um, so, so I think there's maybe some elements of, say, for example, what Baz McCullum has to do with England that Santa doesn't kind of have to do. Um, I also think things like actually the fast bowling academy and the, our fast bowling school is working really well. So there, there seems now, but more than ever before, a kind of pipeline into it. Um, there's maybe some issue around kind of um, do we have enough people who can hit big. Um, and and I'd say kind of batting batting technique, but actually yeah. there's as it stands, there's a core of, of decent ish players who we think could 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 bat. I say decent ish because firstly they'll they'll obviously be some detractors on the side. If Rex is listening, he'll obviously say that you know there is a very weak player opening the batting in um, in in white ball cricket. Um, but you know by and large, in the grand scheme of things the squad composition is all right and there's choices. And at the moment, as you say, we've put together this team of people. I think you might you, you might be right in pointing out that actually a lot of the work Mahela's done is going kind of by and large unnoticed. Like, you know, when you've talked about this in social media, Dom, loads of people have kind of jumped in and be like, what work, what are you talking about, what's he done? But it's, it's getting those players who are really good domestic players or, or talented players to be able to be fully competitive 
in international cricket yeah. all around the world. That's the work that SLC at an elite level need to do. And Mahela had a clear plan. Whether you like it or not, he had a plan the way we were doing it. And I kind of think, that you know, the worry might be is that is that plan still in place? How are people getting prepared for it? Um, it the it, kind of slight issue I might have with South being coaches, I think he might be a bit too pally with some of the senior players. Um, yeah. We, you know, he, he, we, I was going to say he would have played with Angelo, but that's not true at all, is it? He retired just before Angelo. No, he did. He did. He oh, he did. With yeah. Oh, he did play with Angelo. Gosh. I think he did. Um, I was at Sanders' last game. It was at, it was at the Oval. It was, um, I just can't remember if, if, um, Angelo was there or not. Angelo was playing or not. When he, Angelo's just been there he forever. Played into 2011. Sanath played into 2011. So, so he played with Angelo, yeah. I mean, likely. I think yeah. I, I don't know if it's if it's a certainty, but I I would say. Um, yeah. I and I just wonder because the 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 big from from a, from a, you can kind of break it down to red ball and white ball, right? From a red ball perspective, the there's kind of two things going on with Sri Lanka at the moment. It's can we continue this run that we're of good form that we're on? Can we get enough wins? to get ourselves to the London game if if other results kind of go our way um, next year, which is which would be absolutely huge for us just to get there. Yep. And secondly, there is a core of this, of the batting team, of the batting lineup that is started to age. Is Sanath going to be in the right position to manage that transition out, to get to, to move those players on when they need to, to be moved on, right? Um mm-hmm. Is it, or is he too close to the players to actually for that to actually happen? Um, that, this, that's my concern, right? Like that—that's yeah. you know, it's a we we do need foresight here. Um, as you said, there's part of the batting unit becoming older, and then there's young players coming in, knocking at the door, who should be given chances. And particularly, you know, as if we're looking at 18 months out for a World Cup, you don't give young players chances six months. Yeah. Before the World Cup, you give it to them eighteen months before, right? And that's my concern: is what to what degree are we thinking about what's going to benefit us in eighteen months, right? Um, to what degree are we thinking about what's next after Demuth, Angelo, and Chundi go and test cricket? Um, what policy do we have for the way that we play? Um, the, how many chances we're going to give these youngsters? Right, I think one thing we saw with the test is that um, Sonneth doesn't mind chopping and changing a little bit, which can be good. But I think it depends who you chop and change. And I and I uh, tend to think they made a mistake with Nishan Madushka. Right? Why let him open the first two matches in England yeah, and then say, "All right, them, yeah," and then toss him aside? Right. So I I, I think that is going to be really important. Um, and I think that was a controversy when Sanath was playing is what role do the seniors have in the side, right? And should they make way for these junior players? What priorities are there? And um, it's interesting that the person who's been most vocal in support of Sanath is Angelo. They asked him what changed and he pointed directly at Sanath as, the, as sort of the spearhead of that change. And it's, um, it, 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 it's, re- it's really interesting when you're around the uh, when I was around the team for the for the test series, it's um, it's so clear the players really like Sanath. Obviously, I wasn't yeah. there during the Silverwood era era, so I don't know. The the other like the, the other two things to consider is what role Sanath has in Sri Lanka, right? Because when you yeah. talk to you know to, to various friends of mine in the English press. They, and they talk about Sanath. They bring up some of the, you know, it, there's match friction allegations. He's had a suspension yeah. for for, uh, uh, for fixing and, and you know they, they don't necessarily see him as the hero that a lot of people in Sri Lanka see him. I've said this before, Murali and Sanath Jayasuriya is like sh- the soul of Sri Lanka, right? He's um, it, he's the the kind of hero everyone loves. He's a kind of all, all, yeah. like a kind of Sri Lankan answer to like Iron Man, not Iron Man, Spider Man, really, um, because 
you know, he's one of the first players to come out not from a big Colombo school and and go yeah. and smash the ball about and reach reaches the heights, redefines the game. Um, and I think, you know, from a PR perspective, it's a big and easy win for SLC to give it to give it to him. I think there's kind of questions about the way he's going to run the ship, right? That's that's the the questions we we have. I also think you know you brought you brought Angelo up there as well, which I think is really interesting because by far and away he's the most outspoken player Shrunk can have. Yeah. Um. In any in, across any format, maybe only uh, Charmery comes comes close to being as outspoken as as he does, and he's not afraid to to speak his mind. And and also, I think Angelo is quite clear about wanting to play as much cricket as possible. Right. You know. Yeah. Whatever you think about that, if you're Angelo Matthews. Your, your thought should be how do I play as much cricket as possible as good yep. many runs. I'm not I'm not saying that's a negative, but I do think that they might be pushing for one of his mates to get the job. Um the the kind of flip side of this is, I mean, I've heard people say that absolutely everyone across the in the planet who's vaguely interested in cricket has been offered this job. Um he's got anywhere near the, the right qualifications and a lot of people surprisingly have turned it down. Um and not just in the kind of recent weeks or months, when um, since since the World Cup, but over the last few years, apparently the last kind of seven or eight years, you know, pe- people have people have been offered the job and decided against it. And in the case of Mark Rappacash, have decided actually they'll just go work in a, in a school in in Northwest London instead of taking on such a prestigious role. So. I I, I I think I'm a bit more put like overall. I think I'm a bit more positive about it than you though, though Dom, because I think yeah. it is he's a, he's a hero, somebody who makes the players feel good, and someone who's kind of you know we're in the era of vibes based coaching. Um, so maybe Are we? Well, yeah. How's that going for pocket? How's that going for Pakistan? Not going particularly well for Pakistan, but maybe <laughs> you know maybe Jason Gillespie has to just kind of retune his vibes a little bit. Um, yeah. But but for England and India, it seems to be kind of working all right, doesn't it? Um, Gambier being a kind of vibes based man, uh, right? McCollum right. being but, vibes based, like yeah. I think we're talking about. Um, two of the cricket organizations that are most steady and stable in terms of like i don't the, know about the ecb i think the ecb is more unstable than slc but that's that's a discussion for a for a, a different podcast yeah yeah no i i my problem is it's not that Saneth might not be a good coach and he might not be the right guy to lead the side i just want to know how is the you know sort of how is the everyday stuff working yeah. right we've heard about coaches getting sort of sidelined to the high performance center and then being let go. We've heard about um, analysts being sort of brought into the team and then sent out of the team. Like I just, I guess maybe it's that I want to know about the inner workings of SLC and how they view this son of hire. If it's a, he's a good vibes coach, but we're going to continue on doing the things that have made us successful in the past or help prepare us for the future then I have less of a problem with it. Um, if it's a, uh, well, Sunneth is basically taken over and is running ramshod, you know, roughshod over SLC, then I have a very different view. So I just, uh, what I'm asking is, I don't have enough information about how what's going on with Sunneth is affecting the full operations of SLC. So, so I wonder if this is slightly a cultural thing, right? Because in American sports, in American professional sports teams, you have a kind of front of office, back of office, director off, yeah. and then a whole stru- a whole transparent structure. Where in England, generally, it's only like the, it's it's a relatively new thing to have a kind of director of football, or director of cricket, or director of rugby type right. patient, and then with a front team. And I think that's more what kind of the rest the model the rest of the kind of English speaking world probably has. And I, I just wonder yeah. Tom, if you're going to be deeply unsatisfied for the rest of your life, expect an SLC to come out and have a transparent, um, transparently show you who's making decisions where, because sadly, but I do think it's sad because I think these are questions. I think if they did have a kind of hierarchy and if they did have a, a, a decision making map that they could show us, 
um, then I think we'd all be a lot more satisfied and we'd all feel that things were happening and it wouldn't feel as haphazard as it, as it sometimes does. Talking about things feeling haphazard, <laughs> can we talk about this squad for the West Indies series? Because West, we've That's what I'm talking about, right? Yeah. T20 squad and, and we've got a T20 series followed a few days later by an ODI series. Well, obviously grateful for West Indies to come along. If you listen to Murali End or watch Murali End for the first time, two things. Firstly, hit that follow button and hit that subscribe button. And secondly, we will be doing some content with the Caribbean Cricket Podcast during this um, series at some point. Um, obviously, none of us and none of them are kind of full-time cricket people, uh, content creators yet um so it might be a bit haphazard and we can't fully tell you what it is but um for kind of full disclosure i mean i speak to master santoki all the time about other things um just kind of knowing them about, uh, around i want to say around london but london's a huge city uh but knowing them from kind of the cricket verse i suppose so we we will try and get something done together which i think should be quite exciting and quite fun for everyone let's talk about this squad though dom Asalanka captain, um, Hasaranga is the, there as well. Obviously, the kind of outgoing captain, but our star player, Kusil Mendes is there. Uh, Patam Nasanka is there. That's all quite normal. Um, Avishka mm. Fernando, he's he's got the call up. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. I can't remember when. when... I think he was he was in the squad. He was in the uh, squad against India. It's India, but I didn't go to the that. World Cup. Kusil Jan yep. Pereira is there um, again. Someone who's been in and out of the squad recently. Kamindu Mendes is is there. He's been a fixture for what last year, nine months. Yeah. So yeah. Um, Teek Shana is in the squad. Tishra is in the squad. Paterana is in the squad. Uh, Benira Fernando and Asita Fernando are in the squad as well. Um, Dunith Walalage often makes a T20 squad, but yet to play a T20 game. Um, he, he's, he's there, I, um, I suppose, as a kind of backup to um, uh, Wani if he gets injured, or maybe they might play him, I don't know. Then Jeffrey van der Say is back in a T20 squad for the first time in a little while, if my memory serves me correct. Yeah. Shamindu Wickrama Singer, one of the stars of the last LPL. Um, is is in the squad at the expense of former captain Dustin Sharnica. Um, or it feels like it's at the expense of Dustin yeah. Sharnica. Um, and then two more kind of, I'm going to say controversial. I think it's fair to say controversial picks. Yeah, Barnaka sure. Rajapaksa is back in the squad off the back of a kind of successful run in the CPL. And Dinesh Chandimal, one of those senior players we talked about when we were talking about Summit's appointment, is back in this squad as well. There's no place for Angelo Matthews um, in, in in this squad at this moment in time. Uh, Dom, when you saw this squad, what was your initial take on it all? You know, I think... So it's a big squad. It's a 17-person squad for a home uh, T20 series, right? So that yeah. that's the first thing that strikes me, right? Is that... There are a lot of options there. And so the kind of question is, what role are each of these players having in, having in the side, right? Um, to be honest, I don't think it makes sense to bring Bonica into the fold unless you plan to play him, right? It, that's got to be the logic that's, yeah, I, that's dictating I, it, right? I, I agree, and I feel we have this conversation like every, every time a squad comes out, yeah. right? There's no point bringing a... Chandimal in. There's no point bringing uh, Rashada Fernando in. There's no point bringing a Jeffrey Randersay in. There's no it, pick the format and pick pick the player that they're 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 yeah. dropping in. And you go well at, the, at this stage of their career. Why are you bringing these players in if you're not right. they're not there to play? Right, right. Because right. I mean, to my mind, four of the top five pick themselves. Right. So you have. Vendis and Nisanka should open. Yep. Um, Kamindu and, and Charith should be in the side. Yeah. Right? Um, then the question is, you know, who do you go with at six? I would think six and seven is some combination of Hasaranga and Chamindu with Kramasinga, right? So those, yep. those are your two all-rounders. Um, and then you have, you know, Patarana. Definitely is a is a for sure starter. 
uh, Thikshina is a for sure starter. And then so you have maybe three positions open in the squad. Yeah. So, uh, you know, and, and KJP batted quite well against India. So I think in, so only, to my mind, only one of KJP and Bonica can really make the 11. And Dinesh Chandamal, I guess, is in there as the backup keeper, right? If something happens to Kusal Mendes, but KJP is also there. Um, I'm not really sure what role they envision for Dinesh Chandamal at age 34, right, as a backup in the T20 squad. There's plenty of good young talent here that could be put in there, or you could just keep the squad a little slimmer, right? I, I, I don't... I don't. Th- I have no problem with Dinesh Chandamal being in the squad. My problem is, is this chopping and changing, right? Because yeah. um, I think bringing Chandamal and Rajapaksa in for me is just kind of a bit, a bit strange. Because I, I, I just, I don't think Chandy is going to play. Um, and I yeah, see him. maybe they brought him as, in as a second wicket keeper. Now that you said they have maybe, KJP, maybe, right? Yeah, I mean, last time KJP kept wicket, it wasn't a rip roaring success, though, was it? Um, I, I kind of, and then, and that's just, this is the we should add that this is the second time in a row Chundi has been in the squad. He was in the squad for the India T20s and did not play. Yeah, yeah, um, and and. Sorry, one last thing. You mentioned that Bonica comes in off of a strong CPL. It's I'll read you his list strong. of scores. Go no, on, please, please. Do. One, nine, thirty-three, seven, nine, and sixty-eight. Not out. So he had one good innings, basically. So I, I, I don't know. Maybe the argument you could make is that should I have, there hasn't been a lot of T Twenty cricket being played even domestically recently. So they thought they'd take Barnica because he's played some T20 domestic cricket. Um, I'm and, just... And, well, if we're picking on form, Dawson Shanika has been in really good form in this um, Afro Zimbabwe T10. He's been absolutely smashing it around. Um, he, let's say, yeah... Um, Quick info doesn't look, but he's gotten a couple fifties in the list A matches. He scored a hundred in a in an ODI. So for me, if you're going like, even if you're thinking, okay, who are the highest quality backups that I can have in this squad? Dawson Chanaka is certainly before Dinesh Chandamal, so far as I can see, a, um, on my list of things. And then we're not even talking about the younger players who I think should have a chance to get into the squad. Um, the younger players who performed really quite well in in these A tours that we saw in you know and and that's what's frustrating is that there are some players who have been sort of lighting the world ablaze right so there are these young um, you know someone like uh, um, uh, a Kalupahana has was excellent right why not give him a shot why not let him yeah. you know we, we talk about wanting to get these young, hard-hitting, fast-bowling all-rounders, get them in and around the team. If you're having 17 people there, why is he not... What What are you holding him out for? Um, it's, it, it, it's... I want to say it's a bit... It feels a bit schizophrenic, right? It feels like yeah. the bad old days. I don't know if that's kind of true and if it's just my gut feeling because I haven't looked through the last few... You know, the, the, I don't have the Indus squad up in front of me. I kind of can't explain the Barnica... Uh, pick, don't misunderstand me. I think Bronick is a great player, but it it doesn't feel like he's been knocking the door down to get in. I do feel that there's quite an effort online for A, Dustin to be dropped, and B, for Bronick to, to, to be re-included. Um, I, I, at the moment, it feels like we're not picking players in form, yeah. and we're not sticking with the players we've got. I mean, what if you know, if, if T- Tinkshuler doesn't pick up wickets, will he get dropped? We've got two, um, you know, what do I, this is what I think the team will be, right? 
Yeah. I think it will be uh, Patum and Kussel opening. Then Kussel, uh, KJP at three. Uh-huh. Then uh, Charith, Kamindu, Wani, Shamindu, Tichina, Tushara, Patarana. Are you one? You're one bowler short, I think. Am I one bowler that's, short? So, that's ten, right? Is that ten? Yeah. So, so either either Sita or 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 Weller. Okay. Okay. Right. And so then you're playing two se- two two um, two seamers. Playing uh, three seamers with uh, Tushra, Padrana, and Shamindi. Um, yeah. And, and then, three spin bowling option. Three three quality spin bowling options. Yeah, yeah, I actually, you know, I don't think that that's a, a an issue. Like, I think if you wanted to, you could even play someone like, um, well, I'll get up the order, play him at yeah. like three, and then bounce everyone down one. Um, if you wanted to, but if you want to play him strictly as a bowler, I think that's also okay. Yeah, so, so, so I do think it's kind of weird that we've got this far in the world in the history of the world. Dennis yeah. Wallalaga has been. Tearing, tearing it up in t- in domestic T Twenty cricket, franchise T Twenty cricket, French, yep. and, and ODI cricket, and he still is yet to play international cr- international T Twenty cricket. That is yeah. really bizarre, and it's <laughs> it's it's very curious, right? Like it it's um, he clearly has really skilled up. That's the other part about it is that if you watch him play, he's not at all the same player. Who made his yeah. ODI debut two years ago? He is massively skilled up. He's working. He's he's one of those guys like Potham, like Kamindu, like Dikshana, who is super smart, who is adapting his game to the needs, right? Like like Patarana, who knows to be a force in this game, I have to change X, Y, and Z. And even like I, I was thinking um, when we were talking about playing a second spinner in the test. Why isn't Will Oligay getting a look in for that? But that's that's beside the point. But I think there needs to be some clear role definition here. And I think you you've brought back KJP and Chundi, and now adding Bonica back to it. How is someone like like what are you going to tell Kamindu if he doesn't make that side right? Or what are you going to tell Kamindu if you drop him? Sorry, you know you're averaging nine million in in Test cricket. You had one bad inning, so we're going to bring in this guy who may or may not play well. And look, Bonica is a very talented, good player. Like he is a he he is very much a rare breed in Sri Lanka cricket. But if you're going to bring him into the squad, you need to back him and say he's going to bat at this position, and they need to not chop and change him and say yeah, we're going and, to he, give him and he's head. and he's bad until till till we get knocked out of the World Cup, and that's exactly it. exactly. And there's no there's no two questions about it. Yeah. Um, but that, and that's to tie it back to the Sanath conversation. That's what worries me is that when you see these guys come back into the squad, why, right? What is the, what is, what is the vision for this T20 squad? What is his vision for 2026, right? If that's the direct question, right? And I think as the head coach appointed to 2026, that should be what you're trying to answer, right? Like, are you bringing these guys in? Uh, and well, I'll just add, you know, you have a very left-hand heavy lineup at this point with KJP, Kamindu, Bonica, Charith, right? All through the middle order. And and Chamindu is a left-hander as well, right? So well, you potentially become very susceptible to off-spin in the middle overs. Um, so I want to know... Okay, right. If we just say Sanath is, if we keep the problem small and say Sanath is the senior men's national team head coach, period, full stop. What is his plan for this T20 side? Because that needs to be in his in his planning. And I think we're not testing out or seeing what's available for us. And we'll add on, this is not a full strength West Indies side. Right, we know Andre Russell's not playing. We know Nicholas Puran's not playing. In, uh, a bunch of good players are not being played. So this is a chance. There's absolutely no chance Hetmyer's playing. There's no. There's let, no. There's he'll have to take about four flights to get to Strunky. He is. He's definitely getting on the wrong flight at some point. <laughs> like, yeah, zero chance. Right. Yeah. And and so this is a a chance for Sri Lanka to, you know, try out different players to 
to do different things. Obviously, they want to win the series, but Suneth now with his position kind of safely entrenched through 2026, I'd expect him to say, let's find out what we can do with this team and how we can build it to do as well as possible. Tom, we've got to uh, wrap this up. There is more content on its way. Um, Estelle's at the World Cup. Um, Shrunka lost to India. We'll we'll have the reaction to that. If you haven't seen it or watched it already, get on get on to that. Um, it could be the end of an era for, for Shrunka, the women's team, in the next few days. We might hear news. We might. I don't know. I have no prior knowledge that this yeah. is going to happen, but there, there might be a, a major retirement. I don't know. It definitely feels like there'll definitely be a reshuffle. We'll talk about all of that in the the women's cricket show with we'll, we're doing with Estelle or we're done with Estelle. I'll put a link somewhere if you watch on YouTube uh-huh. somewhere to, to, to click on that straight away now. Um, also, we've got Kumbhale Corner as well, the India show. If you're an India fan or if you, you know just want to know what's going on, in India, then then watch that. But let's end on the positive, right? When uh, Winindu Hasaranga, Kusal Mendis, Patam Nisanka, Kamindu Mendis, Charith Asalanka, Tikshana, Walalage, Tushara, Patarana. That's an exciting group of cricketers, isn't that's it? That's a very exciting group of cricketers. And that's what makes me so passionate about the, the discussion we've just had. I know like it didn't sound like it sounded like I was being negative, but that's why I'm passionate because I think you have in this squad the makings of something that could be really special, and I want to see that maximized. So I'm excited for the series, and I think they will play well, but I want to see some good direction and some good planning and some good play. Um, Salas Jaisuri, one kind of final word at him. I mean, the guy reinvented the way people play cricket, and now he's going to kind of rebuild the the empire he left behind. So I think regardless of you know what we've talked about, I just want everyone to know that definitely 100%, we definitely wanted to succeed in this role, right? 100%. 100%. We've been the Morelli End. Um, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Tell everyone about us. Leave us your comments. Leave us your likes. We love hearing from you. We'll be back uh, soon after the end of the first T20i. <laughs>